Good morning. Sorry, we had roadworks along the A6 again, and so just queuing back and then getting everything. Uh, so uh, there we go. The British summer. I'm going on holiday. It's starting to rain. But thank God for the rain, because the reservoirs need it. I've sort of, if you've gone walking up past the kennels and then drop down, uh, the top in particular of the two reservoirs running down to Lime Park is extremely low. And so uh, we thank God for his mercy to us and that we have this instead of 40 degrees temperature. Um, and, uh, and take that. Steve, just a quick question before we get started. All four songs you're okay with, you don't need the guitar today. I, th I thought it, they were all in your repertoire, but I just thought I'd double check before I get, I get going. Um, you are going to at first think uh, that we, are, we have the wrong hymn at the start, um, but let me assure you it's right. Partly, we've already got a harvest. Um, yesterday, we collected some of the rhubarb from our garden and uh, had a lovely rhubarb crumble. And, but also, uh, and in particular, today's uh, song that we start with has three verses, the second, third, and fourth verse, all are quite clearly talking about the parable that we read and reflect on today. And so as we sing, don't just get into autopilot, but also sing with your eyes wide open, read the words, and start to consider what God may be saying to you today as we come into his presence, because it will warm you up ready uh, for the reading from the gospel and for the sermon. And so let's pray. Father God, as we come as your thankful people to you for all that you provide, all the varieties of weather that we have, but in particular the community that we have together, we pray that your spirit will be here in our midst and will be opening our hearts to catch glimpses of your glory. Amen. Let's stand and let's sing.
Please sit. As we came towards the end of that song, it had that um, the free from sorrow, free from sin, there together, together purified. And as we start our service, we come to think of God and requesting that he cleanse us and makes us whole in Christ. And so we say the prayer of uh, preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us for all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You who are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ in the glory of spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The collect for today. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and of, of your great mercy keep us in the same. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're coming into the summer, and uh, so first of all, a big thank you to all our, those who work in our children's work. <coughs> whether that be in the Tots, the Messy Church, or Lighthouse Family Church, and all will be taking a, a worthwhile break. And so we do thank and hope that you sort of feel refreshed to restart in September. That does mean that over the summer, <coughs> we are going to do uh, two uh, all-together services, uh, one in a fortnight, and then a fortnight after that sort of split through the service, just to keep, hopefully, contact with some of those families and we've been inviting. Please pray for those events as we go through the summer. Um, a big thank you to all those who sponsored me for doing the triathlon that I did um, and raising money towards the tower. Um, I've got the amount that was raised online, which is £2,238.88. pence. not entirely sure, fully sure, where the 88 pence came from, because most people did it in whole, but I think... I think that the gift aid charity giving set aside can actually take some gift aid on it. So I think we've got some gift aid thrown in there as well. Um, but this, which is, is just brilliant. 
And so that hopefully will be, we've got to the point where that will be released to Jeff. And we had, I think it was ended up being slightly over £700 in other donations that came in. So that was nearly 3000 So thank you to everybody who encouraged somebody to sponsor for that. Um, but obviously, uh, it was a... <laughs> Well, there's good news and there's bad news. So uh, the, the, there's £200,000 worth of work just on the tower out of work we've got to do. So I reckon that's about 75 of those I need to do. <laughs> um, so, uh, no, uh, there's, still, there's still a long way, obviously, to go. A great start. The two events that we've done so far with the, uh, the concert and that uh, have been great starts in the process. Um, but obviously, we have a long process to go. Big thank you to the, the, the team uh, that are involved in trying to raise that money and looking at getting grants as well and uh, taking that all forward. Let's just pray for the life and work of the church. Father God, as we move into this summer time uh, and we have some things to be thankful for, we do thank you for our, our, all those that work with our children and young people. Uh, and pray for your blessing on them over this summer period. We thank you for the good start on raising money for the tower work that's needed uh, with the follow-on for the rest of the building. And we just pray that you will continue to pour out your blessing, but in particular, you'll pour out your blessing on us in our souls, that we will be bear the fruit of Christ in our lives. Amen. As we move into our readings from Scripture, the first of our reading has glimpses a vision of heaven. Let's have the reading from the Old Testament. <clears throat> the reading is taken from Genesis chapter 28, verses 10 to 19. Genesis 28, verses 10 to 19. Jacob's dream at Bethel. Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a staircase resting on the earth, with its top reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. There above it stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father, Abraham, the God of Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth, and you will spread out to the west and to the east, to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you wherever you go, and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place, and I was not aware of it. He was afraid and said, how awesome is this place. This is not other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Early the next morning, Jacob took the stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on top of it. He called that place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. This is the word of the Lord. In our prayers, we might long to see a vision of heaven and meditate on scriptures like this uh, to see it. And Jacob got that gift in his dreams. And when he saw it, he named it Bethel. And Bethel basically does mean Bet, house, El, God, house of God. Um, that he had a vision of God. And for us, that vision of God is shown to us in the one that shows God that's Jesus. And our next hymn picks that up as we sing about Christ alone, who is the vision of God for us. Yes. 
This cornerstone, this solid ground, fell through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fears are stilled, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand. In Christ alone, who took on flesh, fullness of God in helpless faith, his gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save. Till on that cross, as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied for every sin. Today's reading is from Matthew. Hear the Gospel of the Lord according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Uh, chapter 13, verses 24 to 30 and 36 to 43. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while, enemy was, while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds, sorry, when the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he said. The servant asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At that time, I will tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them into bundles to be burned, and then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came to him and said, explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one, 
and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burnt in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the burning furnace, where they will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteousness will sign like the son of the kingdom of their father. Whoever has ears, let them hear. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to you, the Christ. Let us pray as Graham comes up. Father God, we thank you for Graham and the word you've sown into his life, and in particular for him to speak today. And we pray that we will have ears to hear and our souls will be receptive, uh, receptive fields for the message of your gospel. Amen. Good morning. Good to be in the house of the Lord, yeah? Praise God, praise God. I was thinking, was the Lord Australian this morning, letting it still rain so we can't beat them? But never mind, into in cricket. Let's pray, Lord God and Father, it's always a joy to come to your house. It's the house where we meet with you. We meet with one another. We're in your presence. We sing songs of worship and praise. We come under the sound of your word. And your spirit wants to speak to each one of us every time we gather together. And may you do that this morning for the glory of your name and extension of your kingdom, we ask you. Amen. So we're in the middle of the parable of the weeds, of parables this morning. And um, in Matthew chapter 13, there are seven parables in this little chapter. Stuart, last week, he spoke about the parable of the... Two were listening. That was good, that, Stuart. <laughs> yeah, two listening. Parable of the sower last week. This week you've got me speaking on the parable of the weeds. Next week you've got Tom on the parable of the mustard seed. Is that correct, Tom? Excellent. He always gets the short passages. Always gets the short ones. And then we've got some other passages. The parable of the yeast, the treasure in the field, the pearl of great price, and the fishing net. And all of these parables relate to one subject. The kingdom of heaven. It's all about the kingdom of heaven. And it's going to talk about a great harvest. So I want to encourage you this morning to read Matthew 13. It'll take you 15 minutes. But it'll take you a lot longer to think about it. Meditate on what it actually says. Let God's word speak to us. Because it has an important message to say to us all, as we will, should see this morning. Farming, I know absolutely nothing about whatsoever. A bit like Jeremy Clarkson with his diddly squat farm. Absolutely nothing about it. But it's a great series. But he's struggling with this year's harvest. Since he's got exploding cider this year, it's fascinating when you think you've done it right and suddenly it, things don't quite go to plan. And farming is like that. But where Jesus lives, Israel is a farming community. So he takes a really, really simple analogy of a farmer sowing seed in a field. And he's going to show them how it compares to the kingdom of heaven. So verse 24 says, The kingdom of heaven can be compared to a farmer who sows good seed in his field. And whilst everyone was asleep, the enemy came and sowed weeds among the weeds. What sorts of person would do that. Imagine sowing seeds in your garden, someone comes along and says, I've got a load of I'll have a bit of a laugh at Graham's house, and just chuck a load of weeds in amongst them, and they all come up together. What sort of person would sow um, weeds amongst wheat? That's a nasty person. But the wise farmer, when he becomes aware of the situation, his workers say, should we pull them up? He says, no, no, let them grow together. And a time will come when we'll harvest this, and we'll take the weeds up, we'll bundle them together, we'll burn them, and then we will have a complete harvest. So he lets the two grow up together in the field. So we see two types of seed. We see good seed. How can you tell seed is good when you look at a packet of seeds? 
How do you know? You can only tell when it grows, can't you? You ever notice that? You can't tell a seed is good until it actually grows, which is interesting. But we have two types of seeds. We have the bad seed and we have the good seed. And the bad seed is going to be burnt up and the good seed, when it comes to harvest, is going to be taken into his barns. Notice they grow up together, but they're dealt with differently. It's really important we notice that because it's fundamental to the scripture this morning. So what does it mean to us today? Well, the disciples were just as interested in that question. So they said to Jesus, after he spoke about this particular parable and the parable of mustard seed, they pulled into one side and said, would you explain to us what it means? Explain to us what it means. So he does. And here's his explanation in verses 36 to 43. There are two key verses in his explanation. Verse 37 and 30, or 3, sorry, 37, 38 and 39. Verse 37 says, The good seed, the sower is the son of man. He's the one who sows the good seed. Verse 38, the field is the world. That is the picture he's given us. Verse 38, the good seed are the children of the kingdom of God. They're Christians. The weeds are children of the devil. They're non-Christians. Now, I know it's not politically correct to say things like that anymore, but that's what the Bible says, and that's what they are. That's just the way it is. We have to accept it. The enemy who sows the seed, Jesus calls him the devil. So if you don't believe that the devil exists, Jesus did, and he's, he's quoting it here this morning. And the harvest is the end of the age. Which age? It's the day when the Lord judges the whole of all mankind. Every person who ever lived and walked and breathed on this earth one day will stand before a holy God and give an account. And the reapers in verse 39 are the ones who are instructed to go and gather the harvest together. So the important thing to notice at the beginning of this sermon is we are all part of this story. Every single one of us, not one of us, is exempt. We are either wheat or we are either tares. We are Christians or non-Christians, and there's a harvest for us all. The parable of the sower in chapter 13, verse 18, notice what Satan does to the first batch of seed. As the word of God is preached, it says Satan takes it away. And we see it a little bit further on where the people, it's talked about wealth and riches, come up as thorns and, and sort of smother them. Doesn't Satan offer all the wealth and riches to Jesus on the Temple Mount in his temptation? Yet Jesus wouldn't succumb to it. So we see really early in the way Satan works, he tries to deceive Jesus himself. And now he's going to try and deceive you and me. And that is what is going to happen as we'll develop this passage this morning. The parable of the sower, the good seed, when it found good soil and grew up, that particular seed, which is us and should be us, it produced 30, 60, 100 times in terms of a crop of its life, in terms of our ministry and service for the Lord. And Jesus takes these seed, and this picture of that, this this morning is he's taken that seed and he's planted it in a field. And this is a picture of the church in the field. It's a good analogy by Jesus. I think it's fantastic. But within the church, Satan wants to dis disrupt the church and the work that it does, so tares are sent into the church. So within every church, there are wheat and there are normally tares. You can tell what tares are like. The gossips, the busybodies, the destructive, the critical, they're bringing the church down. They're not about the glory of God. You can see it in, in the church. So we need to avoid contacts and dealing with these people. So be aware that we can have tares in our churches because that's what goes on. We're in the field. We're all in the same field. So we are. It is important. But a time is coming in the future when everybody in that field will be reaped or harvested. And we see this in Revelation 14. So if you've got some more time for a brew, read a bit later on in Revelation 14 where God sends out the angels to bring in the harvest but the ones who come under the wrath of God are taken to one side and destroyed, and the others aren't. They're going to, into God's glory. So this is a real thing. We see it again in Matthew chapter 25, or sorry, Matthew chapter 24, with the, the sheep and the goats, where he gathers them together and he starts to separate the sheep and the goats. And he says, and, and some say, well, why are we in this pile? We did all these things you wanted. No, you didn't. He didn't. When I was needy, he didn't help me. One of his things to do, he didn't do them. 
You didn't follow me. So this is real. This isn't just a one-off passage in Scripture, and I think it's quite important to realise that. It's fundamental to the teaching of Scripture that at some point there's a separation for all or a, di a divvying up of those who are going to go to heaven and those who are going to go to hell. And Jesus talks of the place being a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's a place of suffering. It's a place where you don't want to be. And we get there by our choice, whether we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour or reject him. If you read verses 47 to 50, which is the parable of the fish, it's only a few verses, it talks about the net which catches all the fish. And it says it sorts the good ones out into baskets and the bad ones are destroyed. We just see this theme in the scripture. And Jesus is emphasizing it to the church or to the disciples for a reason. So the passage started this morning with a statement, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to someone who sowed good seed in his field. The kingdom of heaven will only be full of good seed. Only be full of good seed. There is no place for sin in the kingdom of heaven. That's dealt with in the kingdom of earth. But the kingdom of heaven will have no sin in it. Now when we talk about the kingdom of earth, let's look at Genesis chapter 1. What did God say when he finished his creation and created mankind? He says, it's good. It was good. It was perfect. By Genesis chapter 3, Satan has deceived Adam and Eve and sin comes into the world and it's contaminated. Satan went to God's initial creation to contaminate it. That's what he did. God, Satan doesn't mess around. He doesn't want you and I serving God. He doesn't want us, you and I producing fruit for God. He wants to distract us away from God. And he starts early, Satan, in creation. He starts really early. He tries it on Jesus and tempts him so that he'll fail as being the son of God. That he'll fall into temptation. Satan doesn't matter who he goes for. He's gone for God's creation. He's gone for the son of God. He'll come for you and me to draw us away from serving him. And this is why the tares are in the field. We're all in the field together, but we are wheat. We stand upright. We are the sons of God and daughters of God. That is who you are this morning. You are precious in God's sight. Your identity is hidden in Christ. It's who you are. It's who I am. Praise God. But Satan doesn't like that. Satan wants empty churches, not full churches, praising God. We want full churches praising God, people knowing the love of Jesus. So we do. So the kingdom will only be full of good seed. And Satan is bound to try and draw us away from serving God in our hearts. So the good seed and the bad seed live side by side. They grow up together. And this picture is in, it's just a picture of life in the world. We grow up with good seed and bad seeds. And we are supposed to be salt and light. The danger is, as Christians, which we have to watch out for, is how easily we can be corrupted in our faith, and the Bible warns us about it. Where we start to compromise our faith, we start to not read our Bible, we stop praying, we stop having fellowship, the things of God become unimportant to us. We start to drift, and that's the danger, that's what tears do to us, they discourage us. It draws away from the things of God. They put obstacles in the way to serve him. And we need to be aware of these things. And I want to encourage us to watch these things which come into our lives. Whereas Jesus wants us to be the good seed which represents who? It represents him. Because he dwells within us through salvation. And we represent him. We are the good seed of God. And that good seed is to draw men to God. And 1 Peter 3, 9 says it's his will that none should perish. God doesn't want anyone to perish, so he sends Jesus to die for the whole world and their sin. But he wants none to perish, even the tares. So our job is to convince the tares to commit their hearts to Jesus, to turn away from their ways. But they want to fight against us. We know from Matthew 24, verse 24, it says, In the last days the very elect will be deceived as Satan raises up false prophets and messiahs. How can that be the very elect to deceive? How can our faith be compromised? Because Satan doesn't give up. The tares are in the field. 
We and all those who know and love the Lord Jesus as Saviour and Lord are the good seed. But we live in a, lo- a world with lots of distractions and things which try to undermine us. May, let me encourage you to stand on the promises of God's word for the faith of our life the teachings of his word, the fellowship of the saints. It's so important for us to flourish as Christians. We don't flourish on our own. We flourish together. You never see a farmer harvest one ear of corn in a field, do you? Have you ever seen that? Let's get the combine harvester out. There's one there. No, he does the whole field, doesn't he? Because they're together. They're a field. We are a field of Christians, praise God, representing Christ. To do his purposes. We've been distracted in our faith this morning. Are things in our lives not good. Which we need to deal with with God. Every Sunday I've noticed in the Church of England. Which I think is brilliant. We have a confessional every Sunday. How often do we bring the same things to that confessional? We have to deal with things. So we do. We, we confess our sins. But we also have to deal with them. So there is a time coming when there's a great harvest, a time coming, and it will be a glorious day for those who know Christ. It will be the worst day in the world for those who don't. Oh, it will be an awful day. That is the day where weeping and gnashing of teeth, where they're separated and sent to hell for the whole of eternity. Where we stand in the presence of God for the whole of eternity. And what a glorious day it will be for the church. What a sad day it will be for those who didn't respond to the gospel. But the scripture tells us as we read this morning, those who are sown by the Son of Man Christians remain and shine like the sun in the kingdom of the Father in heaven. So let me encourage us all this morning with this passage. It's, it's a hard passage, but it's also a good passage. We who are in Christ, we are the seed that Jesus has sown and we praise God for it. It's important you know your identity in Christ. You are special. You are Christ's ambassador. And we need to serve him. But we will shine like the sun. That day should be today. I wish it was outside. But it's not today. But we should shine like the sun. Do we radiate Christ? I thought we had a revival in the solar car park this morning. It's full of cars. I thought, praise God. Great to see you all. But, we, but we're here to radiate Christ. And let me tell you, you do radiate Christ. You do. We've not been here that long. But you do radiate Christ. You're a great fellowship. You're encouraging. You're lovely people. But I want to encourage you to, that you should radiate Christ. And I should radiate Christ in my life. We don't walk with Satan. He tries to knock us off our stride. Lost the page. Acts 2 says... This is the early church. They devoted themselves to the apostles' doctrine, to the fellowship, the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Reading on it says, in verses 43 to 47, everyone was filled with awe at the many signs and wonders performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. They sold property and possessions to give everyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favour of all the people. And the Lord added daily to their number those who were being saved. Welcome to the field of church. Welcome to the field of church. Where we as ears of corn, which radiate Christ, gather together. We have all things in common through him. We have fellowship together. We serve each other. We care for each other. We love each other. And beyond that, we reach out with the gospel. Let me tell you how important you are in the field. How valuable you are to Christ. When you get some time, read 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Take you 10 minutes. And it talks about the body of Christ. And how everybody is part of the body. But no one is separate from the body. We, We are unified through Christ. We have different gifts. We have different attributes. And he wants us to use them all for the glory of his name but for also for the joy of our salvation, for the fellowship of the church, which will draw people into the kingdom. The church is not a club. The church is a hub. Where people come in, where people go out, 
where we meet together, where we're refreshed by fellowship one with another, where we grow in Christ, where we learn together, we learn to serve together, love together, where we reach out to our community, where the desperate and the needy come in. And what do they find? They find us radiating the love of Christ, which changes and transforms their hearts and draws them to him. Hallelujah. That's what we should look like. That's what heaven's going to look like. Christians radiating the love of Christ. And the earth is our practice area. We practice here. We don't practice loving when we get to heaven. We practice loving now. We practice serving. We know the joy of our salvation now. And we have the fullness of our salvation when we meet Christ. Praise God. What a God we serve. What a God who loves us so much. You are so precious in his sight. Every one of us is a separate ear. And you know, God has planted, the, the picture of Jesus planting is he plants his church. Jesus has planted us lot here. Jesus picked 12 disciples you would never in a million years put together to go out and, and start the kingdom of God rocking through the whole of Israel. You would never pick them. They didn't even all get on. Why would you pick a fisherman when you need a, a, a Bible teacher? I would train them up to be Bible teachers. You wouldn't pick them. But he's picked us a lot. Praise God. Does that not give you joy this morning? How precious you are in God's sight. How important you are. But we're in the field together. We're in the field together. We sway with the wind together. The sun comes out, our little heads turn up towards it. The rain comes down, we all bow down together. You're doing things in sync as, a, as wheat in field. you never seen a field of wheat, them blowing that way, them blowing that way. They're all ears flowing. And the time is coming when he's going to gather us up together. But until that time, the Apostle Paul tells us to be looking out in view of his appearing. Wait for the appearing of the Lord. So do we consider that in our lives? Do we consider that we're waiting for the Lord to come and there's work to be done? And we are the people who's called to do that work. No one else. You know about Christ because someone told you. Do you know how to serve him because someone showed you? We are that generation now who are responsible for those actions. And I want to encourage you all this morning and encourage myself this morning we are called to be salt and light to people. We are called to be a city upon a hill. We can put as many obstacles in our own path in our mind as we wish, but Christ, or the Father, still wants us to do the will of Christ in reaching the people in this area. However God chooses to do that, but we do it together. And that's what he wants us to do. It's easy to complain but it isn't, isn't it much more edifying to build up? Is it not much more edifying to build up? And encourage one another in the faith. When's the last time we encourage each other in our faith? So important we do that. So the harvest is coming. And as the Lord prepares for that day, or the Father prepares that day, because even Jesus doesn't know when it is. Doesn't know when he's returning. Wow, it's incredible, isn't it? It's the Father only knows it. And he's going to reveal it to the Son. But the day will come when he comes to reap the harvest of the whole world. Firstly, we need to be in Christ to be in the harvest that goes to heaven. So I implore you, if you don't know Jesus as your saviour, and turn your hearts to him this morning. If you don't know what that means, come and talk to Stuart afterwards. And ask him. And if, he, and if you don't not happy with his answer, ask him again. He'll give a good answer. He's good. We need to know Jesus. To be in, in the kingdom. And I want to encourage us, as Jesus encouraged the disciples, that we're going to shine. We're called to shine. Just let me find my verse. He calls us to radiate and shine like the sun. St. Mary's Disley. Are we shining like the sun? Or is there a bit of cloud cover? Well, let's start praying. Let's start expecting. And we will start seeing. The harvest is coming. What a glorious day it will be. But there's work to be done till that day arrives. May the Lord bless his precious words to us this morning. Amen.
Let's give ourselves a few moments. What was it that stood out to you as Graham preached? Where was the spirit quickening it in your soul? Jacob's picture of heaven set his feet for the earth, for where he was to go, for what he was to do. And Jesus is preaching about the kingdom of heaven, sets our feet for the earth. What does it mean to shine like the sun in your life? Lord God, send your spirit to us now that we might shine like the sun, that we might shine like Jesus. Remove from us all that tarnishes our souls. Remove even the causes of sin from our lives. That we might be your wheat standing in the fields as a witness to those around. Come Holy Spirit. called to shine like the sun in the kingdom of our Father. And we need to know our Father and all all of the way in which God reveals himself as Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Let's make a declaration of our faith and use the words of the Nicene Creed as they appear for us on the screen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken by the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. And as we look for the life of the world to come, we pray for God's kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. Let's sit for our prayers of intercession. Father in heaven, we come to you now and we 
just ask that you hear us. We know that you hear us. And it's absolutely amazing that the creator of all things is aware of us, each one, as an individual. And we know that you are there to bless us, and you bless us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we pray for your church, your kingdom here on earth. Each believer is added to your kingdom. And we pray this morning for our church here in Disley. We pray for each of our number. We pray for the family of each one of us. And we just need your guidance. We need your protection. We need strength. And we pray, Father, that you would walk with us day by day. Help us to be filled with compassion for those around us. Help us to be kind. Help us to be gentle, humble, forgiving, patient. Just fill us with these qualities that are exemplified in Jesus. And we pray, Father, that you would bless each of us as part of your church with a greater measure of sensitivity to those who are of the world, who are not a part of the church or in fellowship with us. Help us to be gentle and reach out and touch anyone around us that we have an opportunity to encourage them and to lead them to the Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we pray for Stuart, our vicar, and we ask that you would bless him, help him as he ministers to us, help him as he encourages us to draw closer to you. Bless his family, walk with him, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all of those that work so hard to make our church function and to be a shining light in our community. We pray for our wardens, David Kidd and Graham Laffey. We pray for all those assisting them and for all of our church leaders, our readers, our treasurer, all who take part in this ministry. And Lord, we pray also that you would help us as a church to find ways that we can reach out and share the good news of Jesus to the people around us. Just help us to be more conscious of people of each person around us that they have, they have a living soul and those souls need you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the various ministries that we have going on here, the, to reach out to the tots, to the children of the Messy Church, to the Lighthouse Project, and help us to reach young families and open our eyes to new ways that we can be more effective in reaching out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we are sensitive to the people who are hurting, people who are grieving, those of our number who may be ill, are impaired in 
any way to be able to come to our services to worship you publicly. Lord, at this time, we want to pray personally in our own words about people we know who are hurting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for the world around us in which we live. We pray that the war is now going on in the Ukraine and elsewhere will cease. And we ask that you bless those whose lives have been affected by these wars. We pray for our king. We pray for all of our leaders in government. We pray that you would bless and guide our prime minister, guide and protect him and bless, bless all in our country. We pray for all the leaders of all the nations of the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, this morning we pray for each of our ministries we support. We pray that you would bless their workers. May people be reached, lives touched, and souls won to your kingdom. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Part of the good news in Christ is he doesn't just go out to sow for a harvest, he goes out to reconcile us back to God, that when we've gone wrong, he brings us back in his body. That's part of what we celebrate in communion as we come to that in a few moments' time. But let's stand and share, therefore, Christ's peace together. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also, traditionally, we shake hands, but if you know one another slightly better, then you may. You just may. <laughs> So as you head back towards your places and we consider that Christ is not only the sower but he's also the one who tries to change uh, the tares back to wheat, who redeems us, who brings us back. Uh, we remember that he pays for all that in his body on the cross as we sing our offer to him which is how deep the Father's love for us.
Lord God, we thank you that in Christ you have paid our ransom, that you have brought us back, that you have redeemed our souls, that you have transformed us into your likeness and are drawing us towards yourself. Lord, take these gifts and take our lives, that Christ's glory may be shown throughout the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. For he is your living word. Through him you have created all things from the beginning and formed us in your own image. Through him you have freed us from the slavery of sin, giving him to be born of a woman and to die upon the cross. You raised him from the dead and exalted him to your right hand on high. Through him you have sent upon us your holy and life-giving spirit and made us a people for your own possession. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, ever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us, his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and, when he, and gave it to his disciples saying, take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. <clears throat> Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. <clears throat> therefore, therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection <clears throat> and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we will make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us in your love, and unite us in the body of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth, earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing, Blessing and honor and glory power be yours forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour, please sit or kneel. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. We say together, we are not worthy to this your table, merciful Lord trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We're not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, 
but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Tom, do you want to come and help? Yes. Come, for all is ready.
Lord God, whose Son is the true vine and the source of life, ever giving himself that the world may live, may we so receive within ourselves the power of his death and passion, that in his saving cup we may share his glory and be made perfect in his love. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. As we come to the end of our service, we have one more chance to reflect on the author and perfecter of our faith, the person at the centre of it, the person who is the sower, but also the one who saves and transforms us, and that is Jesus. How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in our, our believer's ear. of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be with you and remain with you always amen, amen. go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ